So how about this for something a little bit different? I am standing on the foredeck of an Axopar 25, and to all intents and purposes, it looks just like any other Axopar. However, it has one big difference. This one is powered by a brand new electric outboard engine. We're up to 36 knots, 37 knots. This is not messing about. So supplied by Evoy, it's still a prototype at the moment, but when I say it's an outboard engine, it's not just a small kind of 50, 90, 100 horsepower. This is a brand new 300 horsepower outboard engine, giving this boat a top speed of an estimated 50 knots. And we're gonna have an opportunity to go out and give it a run and see how it actually feels and see whether it delivers. Now, a couple of details about the boat. The hull itself is exactly the same as a normal Axopar 25. It's got twin steps. It's a very efficient running hull. Uh, the difference is obviously it doesn't have a fuel tank. It has two big batteries. So two 63 kilowatt hour Chrysler batteries, one in the same place as where the old fuel tank was and one under the aft seating position. So let's go and take a little bit of a closer look. So there's a few of us obviously keen to try it. You just heard the bow thruster. It does have a conventional bow thruster and a 12 volt system to run all the boats, Norman electrics. But this is the outboard itself that obviously runs at a much higher voltage. Now the price of this boat all up is an estimated 185,000 euros X tax, largely because of the cost of the batteries as much as anything there, around about 40,000 euros each. So you can just have one battery if you want, but for the full power and range, you're gonna need both. And that obviously does put, push the price up. But we know electric boats are expensive. There's a Candela C8 here. That's the best part of 300,000 euros. There is a new Exshore one where they're coming down to just under 100,000 euros. X tax again, but the key thing about this is that it's a conventional boat. It was capable of doing 50 knots. We already know it's a really nice hull. So let's take it out on the water and see how it actually performs. And just to prove that it is a purely conventional Axopar 25, there is a little cabin down here. So none of that is lost to the battery power. They're all under the deck itself. So you still get the cabin and all the other features and benefits of this very pretty and very capable little boat. And when you come down into the cabin, you can see again that all the usual features are there. There's a little toilet under that seat. There's even a small sink and of course the bed itself. So exactly the same as a normal Axopar 25, but all electric. So listen how quiet that is. You can barely hear a thing, there is no engine noise at all. That is a really curious feeling. It looks just like a petrol engine. And it goes just like a petrol engine. And weirdly, it even sounds a little bit like a petrol engine at higher speeds. It's obviously not the pistons and cylinders making that noise, or the exhaust. I think it's just the motion of water past the hull, but when you're going quickly, there is inevitably some noise. But you can hear a very, very faint, higher-pitched whine behind it. But mostly it's just the movement of water past the hull, and it's certainly powering us along every bit as easily as a combustion engine. That is pretty remarkable. Let's just have a look. Over the side. I'll put the seat speed out. Okay, we're already doing 26 knots. See, we're using, now we're using 200, 230, 260 kilowatts. We're up to 36 knots, 37 knots. This is not messing about. That is properly quick. Slightly struggling to keep the camera set up. See how quickly we're going. Wait. Oh, we're just going over a weight now. The handling right. very nicely. Now you can see that that battery is starting to be used up. We started on 99% as we were creeping out. We're down to 95% already. And you can see there is a readout of the range that has dropped. We're now looking at about 20 nautical miles. It's come down to about 17, I think. But it's very impressive. 
just how powerful that is. So this is in fact the prototype engine and it's currently using a, a Mercury lower leg and Mercury engine housing. The finished version will be Evo's own fully bespoke motor but for the moment just to demonstrate the power of the motor itself they are using the mercury casing and gearbox and so on and in fact it's that gearbox which is creating some of the noise you can hear at higher speeds but to be honest given that it's a prototype it actually looks rather good but i guess the styling of that is down to mercury rather than the boy but there's no doubt that the internals seem to work extremely well So you can see some of the details here. It is 300 horsepower, 800 volts, and it has 126 kilowatt hours of battery, which gives an estimated range of 26 nautical miles at 25 knots. And a rapid charging time of 45 minutes to get it to 80% full. So from zero to 80% takes 45 minutes, albeit on a rapid DC charger. And let's not forget that it's only a 25 foot boat and there are five of us on board, so a fair bit of weight too. It is uncanny how much that sounds like a petrol engine. So here you can so see the gubbins itself. So explain what's going on down here. So here's the 22 kilowatt charger built in the boat so you can plug it into a normal socket. Right. There's a DC converter which you can convert uh, AC to DC or uh, use one of those superchargers or a 32 amp charger that we have on the dock. Right. The DC cabinet, our normal 12 volt system which powers the screens, uh, the toilet, the lights, uh, starting and the, then there's a false bottom on top of the aft battery which is about that the whole whole length of this multi-store and so you've got the two batteries there's this one here and then there's another one yeah. where the you fuel tank was just see it from there okay but it's it's right it starts from about here and so how big are each of these batteries in kilowatt hours uh, 63 63 and who makes those uh, Chrysler so it's Chrysler batteries, batteries. Yeah. okay what about the power and fire protection Fire protection, it's a closed loop system. We have a fire extinguisher. <laughs> That's yeah, there's, great. yeah, nothing, it doesn't need anything extra. And what do the batteries weigh, do you know? 380 kilos each. Each? Yeah, so it's 800 kilos of extra weight on the boat. Wow, and the engine itself? Uh, 280. 280, yeah. okay. So, so then all these control units, they add up for So it's still a lot heavier than a, lot heavier, a yeah. conventional petrol yeah. engine, yeah. even with a full fuel tank. 150 kilos more. That is a lot of extra weight, ah, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. But it's quite well compensated on this boat. We've moved quite a lot of the weight forward as well. There's a water tank at the bow. So it's, we have a pretty same sort of uh, trim. Yeah. Now, weirdly, even though it's incredibly quick and impressively fast, it's actually at this speed where you appreciate the true value of an electric outboard because there really is no noise at all from that other than the churning of the water behind it. It is absolutely silent to all intents and purposes. I'm sure there is some gearbox noise or motor noise, but in an outboard slung out the back of it, you cannot hear it at all. And at displacement speed, that is a rather lovely thing. And of course, there's also no fumes at all. I know these latest four-stroke outboards are extremely refined and very clean, relatively speaking, but they can't match the silence or the totally fume-free effect of this. That is a very impressive creation. So there we go, we've been out, we've had a really good play on board the boat, and I thought I just wanted to show you this. So we've been mucking about for uh, probably the best part of 40 minutes, and we have 64% battery power remaining. Now, I know that doesn't give you as much range as a normal boat, but I think people get rather hung up about it. You know, on a day boat, most people go out for a maximum of maybe, I know, somewhere between five and 10 miles to a nice bay. They anchor up, they have lunch, they chill out, and then they blast back again. So 
realistically, for most of the kind of normal usage, it's perfectly acceptable. But I think what has been most surprising about this boat is just what a strong performer it is. Sure, you're not gonna get the same range, but you do get the same performance, and you get the added benefit, obviously, of much cheaper fuel when you're charging it on electricity. You get the quieter ride at displacement speed, and you get no emissions. So, although every boat is a compromise to some degree, I'm amazed how small the compromise is to have a performance sports boat, all electric, with this much talent and all the abilities of a normal boat, but without petrol power. Very impressive. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one.